the microphone is close enough from here. I mean, it depends how loud it would be. It's not something, I don't think I can turn it. Try to turn if you can, a, move. you can move around if you want. Okay, yeah, I can move around. There's still way to do that. Um, Like, we just need to sit here for the rest. You can put it wherever you want. Okay. Is it also for the people in the room? 
for everyone. Yeah. For everyone. So if they want to, if someone here physically wants to ask a question, they should, but they will control it. I mean, I will, Miguel. So the queue works perfectly, but are they going to use the queue? Yes, no? because uh, I mean, if they use the queue, everyone should use the queue online or on site. Yeah, that the idea. Uh, the idea is for for everyone to use the queue. Okay. I'm gonna uh, say that. Okay. Do you want uh, when when you explain it, we can show it very fast because it's remembering the website, very easily accessible from their mobiles. Yeah. Here in participating in our meetings, they click there, Thank and they go to room two. Will she be here? Yes. Yes. I will be here. Oh, wow. you you I will be here.然后你把你的Skype的那一个手机 你是放在屏幕上面吗？还是可以在从那边发言？没事。呃，他们那是什么？另外还有在那边。哦，好。Sorry, <笑> In Taiwan, we have long been committed to assisting diplomatic allies in building up their basic infrastructure, including in areas such as information. Now, okay, huh? Now, what's that? Now, what's that? Now, what's that? Now, what's that? Now,这样可以吗对不对那我们就往正前方然后我park起来咯就不再动咯还是说我们前面有三位要讲我们的发言人是最后一位吗你这样讲我听得到对但我的意思是说我的位置就在这边不动了吗或者是说我们前面还有三位讲者要用这个地方您这个没有办法动就是在这边您可以稍微这样子我就在这边了对你就是稍微可以这样好那就是在这样子你就可以稍微开一下
this is a, a robot. <laughs> you will we're, use it? We're gonna have, yeah, we're gonna have a... Do you know so? Yeah. I presume so. Do you know Maritza? No. Maritza is from the ITU. You want to go into the director of Data Foundation? Did you find your presentation? Did you put it on the screen? I want to make sure this is Okay, I can show. Ning Kui, go to the Hello there. Hi. Hello. Good uh, morning for those who haven't eaten. Good afternoon for those who have. Um, I'm very glad to have you all here. My name is Miguel Candia. I am from the Permanent Mission of Paraguay and a government MAG member of the IGF in my first year. And, and um, I have the, the pleasure of being moderating this open forum on the full connectivity of countries such as the LLDCs, LDCs and SITs, which are in themselves having different scenarios and different realities that uh, we need to overcome and we need to step in and out in order to, to have the, the necessary evolution we, we need in order to fulfill the path. Before going into the, the issue itself, I, I would like to give Luis from the, from the IGF Secretary at the floor for a second so he can uh, explain to you the, um, hen the hands up system that we're gonna use for this uh, event and that it is uh, experimental as far as I understand it for this year. Luis, you have the floor. Thank you, Miguel. Indeed, yes, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, you are a pioneer because it's the first uh, um, session in which this is going to be used. This system is going to be used uh, probably massively next year, but uh, this is a new electronic queue system, uh, democratic, that we're going to use for both on-site and online participants. So uh, simply I'm going to show you very fast in one minute how it works because you can access from your mobiles, okay? So both online or on-site participants through the world can ask for the floor and it will appear here in the room, okay? And in internet. So if you all go, uh, access your, uh, uh, our website, in indicoforum.org, and you go here to participate in our meetings, okay? And you click there, you will access to this page, okay? in which the system is shortly explained, but it's very intuitive. Uh, there are two rooms. We are going to use room two for this meeting, okay? So there are two buttons. One button is to ask for the floor, and the other button is to see the queue, the current queue, okay? So if you click on this button, you will access to the current queue, which is this view, okay? This is what we are going to keep here in, on screen together with the transcripts all the time. So the queue is public. Luis. Would you press for us? Ah, so there. Should I ask, put my question in the queue or no? <laughs> I think you should. You, you are going to ask for the floor, but. No, no, no. There's a question. Uh, you went too fast. Could you just repeat? Uh, sure. Please. It's okay, here and then? It's in the front page. Participate in our meetings. Ah, okay. Okay. Then, in participate in our meetings, you have at the bottom of the page two buttons for room two. 
access the floor request system or see the current speaking queue, okay? So if you see the current speaking queue, you will see the current speaking queue, which is empty at the moment, okay? And this is what we are going to show in both on-site and online participation. And if you click the other button, which is the floor request system, okay, you will be asked for your community profile. You all should have in a, pro, uh, a community profile because you registered to this conference, etc. So you just log in. I'm going to show you a test. And this is uh, the, the queue. So Jovan has asked for the floor indeed, I see Jovan, okay? So the, the system is, is working. You just, to ask for the floor, you, you would just click on hand up, okay? And then you will appear in the queue. It's very fast. I will do that, uh, just do a test uh, so as you to see. I click on hand up and the queue updates, okay? So this can be done by online or on-site participants. This is democratic access to the floor system, okay? If I go and show the, the, the queue, the view of the current queue, my name appears here. Well, this is a fake name, but it appears here, okay? And at, at any time, I can put my hand down, only my hand. I cannot touch, of course, Jovan's hand. So I click on uh, here in the queue, and I put my hand down. And with this, I will leave you to uh, use the system and anyone online or on-site participant can use it, okay? So I put my hand down here, okay? And that's all. You will see there is a small checkbox if you represent a remote hub. This means that people, remote hubs that have registered could also be put in the queue as remote hubs. And this depends on the chair of the meeting if, they, if you would like to give more preference to remote hubs, okay? So if we see the, the queue now, the queue only shows uh, Jovan at the moment, okay? So this is the view of the queue that we're going to keep during the meeting, okay? So Jovan is next on the floor and I will leave you, uh, I will let you use the system, okay? Thank you very much. We thank you very much, Luis, for the explanation. So just uh, keep in mind that this is uh, uh, the first time we use it. So don't worry about it if you, if you have, are having troubles. We're gonna open the floor anyway for the on-site participants. Uh, so if, you're, uh, if you don't have the chance to uh, enter the queue here, you will have the, time, your, the chance to take the floor if you feel like it. And it would be a pleasure for us to give you the floor. So let's go to business. Um, well, the, the objective of the, of the open forum is to bring together the expertise of different uh, institutions uh, and, digital, and digital representatives for, to see the environment and to deepen the understanding and widen the conversation about the implications of the ICTs in enabling ways to develop critical infrastructure for countries like ours. Again, and LDCs, L, LDCs and SEEDs, for those uh, who are not uh, familiar with the acronyms, is landlocked developing countries, least developing countries, and small island developing states. And, and uh, we have seen around Geneva that it is widely comprehended that uh, developing countries, particularly these, uh, these countries, uh, face uh, different challenges in their policy uh, and environment to enhance their capabilities and to improve connectivity. Um, this can come in a various uh, packages, in, in various ways, these challenges, I mean, and, and they come uh, as, a, as a challenge to, to not, not only to develop themselves, but uh, to develop policies as well. So for, for um, to have a more comprehensive view, we have uh, with us uh, very knowledgeable knowledge people with us. We have uh, Mr. Yola Kubalija from Diplo Foundation, the director of Diplo Foundation. We have Jane Kaufman from ISOC, and we have Maritza Delgado from ITU, whom I thank very much for being with us. And um, well, we, we try to use these, uh, these platforms 
to make uh, to make the case of the LLDCs, LDCs and seeds, and um, because uh, we f we are a part of the the international community, and the the evolution in itself or the developing of our countries come with the developing or of all other developing countries and with the help of those who are developed. So we are uh, we are a, a team in this and to understand better how uh, it works for some countries may be a, an, an enabler to understand the, the other realities and to work together. With this, I will start with Marisa, if, if you allow me. Okay, so with Marisa from ITU to give us the scope on, on what the ITU is doing on this matter. Yeah. Marisa, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, I want really to first just start by thanking the organizers for inviting ITU to this session and to this forum. As many of you know, International Telecommunication Union is a United Nations agency for information and, com um, and communication technology. And its commitment is to connect all people around the world. We all know that information and communication technologies for the development of least developed countries, landlocked developing countries, and small island developing states is key. And this has been recognized by ITU as of high importance. Reason why, World Telecommunication Development Conference, a resolution 16 and resolution 30 of its plenipotentiary conference provide ITU with a mandate to pay special attention to these countries in highlighting the key role that ICTs play as enablers of national development, socioeconomic development, and also to help these countries um, achieving the 2030 uh, agenda uh, for sustainable development through the use of ICTs. Furthermore, ITU has adopted in its last plenipotentiary conference that was held in Busan 2014, Resolution 200, which is the Connect 2020 Agenda. This agenda is, uh, is for global telecommunication ICT infrastructure development. This agenda has four specific goals. Goal number two goes that 50% of its population of uh, least developed countries should have access to the internet by 2020. And 20% of its people should be using the internet by the same year, 2020. So having this mandate in place, ITU assists least developed countries, small island developing states and landlocked developing countries through the implementation of different activities, different programs and projects to help these countries participate more and benefit more from the uh, information society work. I just, as an example, I just want to mention some things that ITU is doing. For example, within the uh, development sector, ITU has a program which is called Concentrated Assistance. And uh, uh, different uh, LDCs participate each year from these, uh, from these concentrated assistance and benefit. For example, we, uh, this year, uh, Zambia received ICT equipment to support the schools for visually impaired children. Also, Zambia benefited from another project that we just concluded, which is an early warning system project. This project was developed together with the regulator, SICTA, and is to uh, develop, in, they implement two early warning systems in two different uh, locations. One is in Beta Island and the other one is in Kasaya Village. This is a very nice project because uh, we had a lot of issues uh, with implementation. However, these will bring people the opportunity to receive early warning alerts when floods are coming and also to uh, provide connectivity to communities, very rural communities, where there is nothing there to be able to communicate to the central government to say this, uh, that something is happening there. Uh, this will reduce vulnerability uh, of people and will at the end save lives. 
Another project that we are developing right now is um, it's a it's on big data. Uh, this project is being undertaken in uh, developed in Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Liberia, and this project will uh, help tackle the spread of epidemics such as Ebola because the, these countries suffered a lot, so ITU reacted and is helping these countries to uh, uh, develop this uh, big data project, which is uh, based on CDR, so it's a call data record. And this will provide them to allow uh, to have spread maps so they can follow up people and they, they will tackle the spread of, the, of an epidemic. It can, it can be used for many things as well. Another project that we are developing in the, within the LDCs in, in Africa is the development of wireless broadband internet uh, um, infrastructure, internet infrastructure. This project is aimed at providing low cost or free connectivity for schools and hospitals and the underserved population in rural, rural and remote areas in different countries. This uh, project is being undertaken and developed in uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, Swaziland, Rwanda, among others. This project includes uh, the development of ICT applications based on each country's need, and also capacity building of local experts through training that is given to them so they can replicate the knowledge, and to people that will be managing the infrastructure uh, and the, the, the wireless broadband networks. Also, as of high importance as well, is the development of an ICT broadband network plan uh, for the entire territory, because if without a plan, nothing can be achieved. This is for the least uh, LDCs and, uh, and landlocked countries. I just want to mention and highlight that uh, in this project, Rwanda is the most, most successful case. Rwanda also has been able to connect to the East African submarine cable, and that, uh, that will provide um, support to, to the internet access and will improve speeds of internet. We have another uh, project, which is for, it, this one is for the small island developing states. We, ITU, signed an agreement back in 2014 with 11 Pacific countries uh, to provide them with con a connectivity uh, for development and also to be used for emergency telecommunication purposes. These 11 Pacific countries will develop 55 e-community centers, and the e-community centers will be placed in the most rural and unconnected areas. You know that SIDS, their, their main challenge is to connect all the islands that they have, and this project will be uh, building 55 e-community centers. And also, as an important thing, it is not only to build the centers, but also to help these countries to develop a local business model, because at the beginning, the project will, uh, will, be, will provide uh, satellite connectivity free of charge. But uh, at the end, uh, communities should know how to continue with this business. And the reason why ITU is helping these countries to uh, develop these local business uh, models uh, for sustainability of the centers. Uh, a similar project was done before in Samoa with, uh, and we had a very good um, Results. Um, as another activity that ITU is doing is um, the development of uh, assessment, assessment, assessment reports. And taking into consideration uh, SDG 9, or target C, on significantly increase access to ICTs and strive to provide universal and affordable access to the internet by 2020 and LDCs, ITU together with the United Nations Office of the High Representative of Land Log Developing Countries, uh, Least Developed Countries, and the Small Island Developing States, have um, uh, done this report, have developed this report. This report, this, uh, what I have in my hands is a draft. The report will be uh, launched mid-January next year, and the report is on achieving universal and affordable internet in the least developed countries. 
The, this draft provides, and the report will provide some highlights that I want to share with you because I think it's, uh, it's very useful. It mentions that by 2016, all 47 LDCs have launched already uh, a 3G mobile um, services, and 60% of the population had been covered by, the, by a 3G network, which is, which is a, a very good um, a, a information. And also, um, it, this report provides information that basic, basic services and ICT applications over 2G networks already that they have, have had a, a, a significant impact in development in this country. So we are expecting a, an increase of development through the use of broadband because 3G is broadband. There is another thing that I want to highlight and is the, is the lack of digital literacy has been a, an emerging leading barrier for development. You know that most of the people can have all technology in their hands. But if they don't know how to use this technology and they don't know the benefit, so uh, they will be scared to use it and they will not even try to, to, ha uh, try, uh, to have access to this. So that is, is leading for, to tackle development. So what we need to take into consideration is that we need to support these countries in uh, raising awareness on the need to provide uh, more uh, digital uh, lit literacy for people there. Although 800 million of people are still offline, by 2020, one out of four people will be using the internet. That's another highlight of the report. These are some things that we are doing, and we have other two reports that are coming out, and this one is for Bolivia and, and another one is for Paraguay. And uh, this report is examining legal and regulatory aspects of, of, of these countries and identifies initiatives that can lead these two countries to improvement, innovative services that will help uh, these two countries to improve development and also focus in, in, in challenges. And these are just some of the activities that ITU is doing uh, on, uh, with regards to LDCs, SIDS, and LLDCs. And with this, I, I finish my intervention, and I pass the floor to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marita for your intervention, it was very interesting. And of course, I will read the report for Paraguay, I promise. And uh, no, uh, the reality is that uh, the, as, a, as government, we do believe that the ITU has a strong role to play in the achievement of the uh, SDGs. So uh, from here to 2030, it, uh, the ITU is gonna have to take a, a leading role within the, her, the, the sisters agencies. So that's what we expect from, and I think that's gonna, uh, one, one, of, one of the outcomes from the PP next year is gonna be that, that, uh, that need of investment of resources and capacity building for the uh, objectives uh, within the 2030 agenda. Thank you, thank you Maritza for this. Uh, let me give the floor now to Jane Coffin from ISOC, and uh, we know that you are doing a, an excellent job too, so we, 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 can, we want to hear from you. Thank you very much and welcome everyone. Um, I'll try and be brief. I'm just going to give you um, some highlights about a report we're working on. But just to back up for a sec on what we do do with developing countries and in particular landlocked countries, one critical factor for internet development which leads to socioeconomic development is development of internet exchange points, community networks and other local infrastructure. Many of us in this room have been working on uh, communications, whether it's telco, old telecom infrastructure, or now internet infrastructure for many years. We have a problem because we have gaps. There are many people that are not connected. So some of the traditional methods are not working because if magically everything were okay and the markets were fabulous, there would be connectivity, yes? 
So we have to take a look at regulatory issues, um, everything from licensing and spectrum and uh, new cross-border connectivity models because without cross-border connectivity and faster deployment of networks for businesses, we're not going to have that connectivity established and people connected. Um, we have a report that we're releasing like the ITU in mid-January, end of January, and we're working closely with um, the ITU team and we're actually looking for peer review experts to help us take a look at the draft. So if any of you are interested in a draft report, it's called Internet Crossing Borders, Boosting the Internet in Landlocked Developing Countries. Um, the very simple framework of the report, I know my computer's frozen, is one we structured around our um, enabling environment philosophy at the Internet Society, a framework. We looked at the characteristics of, of a certain subset of LLDCs. There are 44 LLDCs, and I believe 32 of them are considered developing countries. So we looked at a very small cross-section to see what characteristics across different regions were the same. We focused on infrastructure. We looked at skills and digital business elements, governance, and unlocking the internet for development. We wanted to not um, mirror the same topics that the I2 was doing, but do something complementary. So it's more of a trade focus and a business focus that is sort of synonymous. Um, obviously, many of you know that there are higher transportation cost delays and there's, uh, there's less trade in many landlocked countries for those reasons. We looked at three other critical factors um, in the report and how the internet can help with the specific conditions of L LLDCs. One, we look at networked trade systems. We looked at cross-border fiber optic backbones, and we looked at digital trade. And we have a draft on our website of the executive summary. It's a beautiful picture of a woman from Kyrgyzstan, and we've done a lot of work there. Um, so if you can find the report, I'm happy to give you the link later. The case studies are from Bhutan, Botswana, Burkina Faso, Ethiopia, Kyrgyzstan, uh, the Lao PDR, the Lao Republic, Paraguay, Rwanda, and Tajikistan. We looked at network custom software issues, trading across borders issues, and other infrastructure like backbones, mobile. Um, we took a look at the importance of internet exchange points, which keep, keeps local traffic local and cuts down on what are called long haul traffic costs when you send the traffic out of your country to connect inside your country. So with internet exchange points, you can create a more robust internet ecosystem, develop better technical experts, and increase your overall um, hosting ecosystem as well and bring in a lot of content delivery networks to put their uh, caches and content inside your country versus outside, <coughs> which brings a, a higher uh, resolution of the, the data to you often. We looked at the mobile coverage, as I said before, affordability, look at, as uh, Mariska had said, the importance of fostering digital skills and literacy. So it's neat that our report will actually be a nice dovetail to what the ITU is doing. Um, we looked at whether or not there were innovation hubs and tech parks. And some of our conclusions um, and recommendations that we're putting forward are synonymous with where the ITU is headed, but um, I, I won't give you all those recommendations now, but know that this report will be coming out and it's an important factor in taking a look at how we increase digital skills, digital, li digital literacy, and the importance of cross-border connectivity. One uh, anecdote I will give you, there's an article from The Economist from July, I think it's July 14th, to, uh, 2014, take a look, it's July 2014, where it took almost a year of negotiations between two countries to try and get 50 meters of fiber over a bridge. Now if you're a business and you're trying to deploy infrastructure, delays of a month are bad enough, but a year is complicated. So finally this company called Liquid Telecom, which deploys about um, a thousand kilometers of fiber every <coughs> two months, I think, in sub-Saharan Africa. We're talking terrestrial fiber, not just uh, mobile or wireless networks. They put some fellows in a boat with the fiber and they put, they just dragged the fiber under the river and they did that in about five hours. So what happened was that there were all these discussions among the, the border patrol, the historical society, because the bridge was an historic bridge, the Ministry of Communications, the regulators. You had five or six ministries on each side so one thing I would often say to all of you if you're in government, it's really important that you talk about these issues and try and figure out ways to remedy the situation because landlocked countries depend upon their big neighbors or their small neighbors to get to the sea. 
If you don't have access to submarine cables, those are the biggest pipes out there for connectivity. There are some countries that are being charged about 21% VAT after costs to take the traffic from the border of their country, which is landlocked, to the sea. If you're a developing country and your GDP is pretty low anyway, and your companies are being taxed another quarter on the traffic itself, you're choking connectivity, you're choking development, and you're choking socioeconomic development. So I'm just going to stop there. I'll give some more anecdotes later. But the report is interesting from our perspective, from an internet geeky perspective, too. But it highlights some great things that the ITU is doing as well. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Jane, for that. Yes, it is. Uh, you, you touched some very interesting points. And uh, just let me say that uh, the, the title of, the, of this event, uh, it has a a small tweak, and it says, uh, islands surrounded by land. And it's because of that. Uh, Landlocked countries, we have no sea, but we are surrounded by others that normally have that effect on us. Willingly or not, it just happens. Yeah. Uh, and so um, th those, those scenarios, when, when you have to um, discuss for years this, uh, it, they, are, they are reality. And, and we are having, for in the easy case of Paraguay, we are having discussions for a long, long time, uh, not only bilateral, but in a sub-regional uh, level, such as Mercosur, for example. And, and it all has uh, a role to play. And uh, well, I, I don't want to take more time on that, but thank you. Thank you for touching on those points. And let me give the floor now to <coughs> Mr. Ivan Corvalilla from Diplo Foundation. Uh, I know you know him. For those who don't, you will be Good to know him. Okay. <laughs> Given you have the floor. Thank you, Miguel, for this PR. <laughs> <laughs> my we pleasure, are, my pleasure. We're good friends, and I can see many, many friends in the in the room, uh, the former students from Pacific Island states. And this is probably the best intro uh, what what we are doing. We are considered Diplo Foundation as informal diplomat diplomatic academy of small island states. Because we started developing online courses relatively early for uh, small island states uh, in the in Commonwealth in 1996. We have alumni from more or less all uh, small island states. And sometimes you have a ministry with uh, 20 people at the, in some very micro, micro uh, island states. And uh, sometimes our students, when they connect to online session, they say, oh, by the way, the whole ministry is now watching what's going on, you know, 20 people around the screen. But this is the rea reality. Therefore, it is, um, uh, we are very familiar with the concerns and problems of small island states, and I will reflect on a, on a few points. And the first point is related uh, to build what Jane discussed on the one new development which is extremely important and should be kept in mind. For the first time in the history, the traffic, telecommunication traffic, is moving to, from so-called sea, uh, underwater sea cables to overland in Euro-Asia in particular. I'm referring to Euro-Asia. Uh, with the one, uh, one uh, belt, one road uh, in, uh, initiative, Chinese initiative, and other initiatives which are basically trying to lay the cables over the uh, uh, land mass, Eurasian land mass, following infrastructural project, railway, uh, pipelines, and anything else. As you know, throughout the history, whenever a uh, road is uh, developed, cables are uh, laid uh, around this line. Therefore, for the first time, the famous line of going uh, from the Southampton, uh, Gibraltar, Malta, spent 12 years in Malta and other small island states. Uh, uh, Alexandria, uh, Suez, you're drawing a map in, the, in your heads. Alexandria, Suez, uh, Aden, uh, then Bombay, and then around the Indian sub-ocean to Malacca Bay, Singapore, north over China, south towards Australia. Uh, st it still carries about 90% of the traffic between Asia and Europe, but the shift is major, and uh, that will be the major, it will have major impact, especially for Euro-Asian landlocked states. You mentioned Kyrgyzstan mm. or uh, Taj Tajikistan and uh, Mongolia and those, those landlocked states. Therefore, that advantage of, uh, of need to, to go to the sea in order to get to the internet will be, will be shaft shifted in the next, next five to ten years even faster, I, I guess. This is the first point. The second point related to small island states uh, in particular is that uh, uh, they are equal participants in the international relations uh, and the principle of equality applies to them. And uh, this is a great, 
cornerstone of international relations, but in the this, in this same time burden, because uh, what uh, small states of Tuvalu has to do is more or less the same what uh, China or Russia or the United States have to do. In terms of reporting, ensuring that laws are applied, signing treaties, you name it and you have it. Now, uh, that creates a problem because uh, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, <coughs> with the 20 people, to re uh, uh, write all reports, to ensure application of the rules is next to impossible. In addition, many small island states from the uh, Pacific are not yet represented in Geneva, where a lot of digital policy is happening. And it leads me to one concrete example, and I will quote the country because I'm allowed by permanent representative. Uh, at the beginning of October, I was in, uh, in New York delivering a briefing for the permanent representatives of, uh, of the UN member states. And discussion went on UNGG, uh, cyber war, cyber, big issues, you know. They're popular in these circles. And then one ambassador raised his hand and said, well, I have a problem I said, to raise. I'm not particularly concerned about UNGG and big, these big issues, but we have a very concrete problem, Ambassador Kiribati. He said, a few years ago, in online transaction, we lost $1 million to a shipbuilding company in uh, Indonesia. And we are trying to recover that money. And, uh, and I said, fine, I bought your department, and well, and then you in discussion come to the point that you don't have uh, experts when such small island states, uh, even bigger states, do not have ex experts to the digital forensic cyber crime and the other issues. And it led me to, to one important aspect that we have to keep in mind while we are discussing big narratives in digital policy. There are very <laughs> concrete problems like re, uh, uh, recollecting this one million dollars by, by Kiribati. Some solutions have to be found and I always argue that if we don't find a solution for this type of the problems, it could be front desk in the UN, in some other framework. It could be one-stop shop, which doesn't need to be decision-making, and it shouldn't be decision-making, but the place where countries like Kiribati can go and place their problem and being directed then to Interpol, to uh, UNODC, to other players, private players, SWIFT, whoever was involved in this process. This is the major challenge, and I think this is completely completely underestimated, and we can have a quick fix when it comes to, to that. The third point is that uh, uh, whatever we do with capacity building, and we put a lot of efforts at Diplo to, to, to train uh, people from the small island states, there are uh, limits by, by the size of small island states. Therefore, you cannot expect that Kiribati will have expertise in cybercrime. It's, well, maybe by coincidence. Uh, or uh, other small, uh, small states, uh, and I know bigger states, bigger when I say four or five million citizens who do not have that expertise. Uh, should we develop that expertise? How? And uh, what would be the next steps in that direction? Those are important decisions and practical decisions. I mentioned cybercrime, you can mention e-commerce, fight against child pornography, uh, you name it and you have it. And those are issues which are practical and direct issues that, that, uh, that we have to, uh, have to address. And I think we can find relatively quick and simple solutions. Because personally, knowing small island states and other small states, it is not realistic to expect that they will develop this capacity by covering 43 digital policy issues. The last point which will probably uh, affect the small island states is the overall question and discussion on net neutrality. We know that net neutrality is a national problem. It, we know that it is very uh, controversial uh, problem these days in the United States. But if net neutrality on the international level is uh, dismantled, the main losers of, uh, of uh, end of the net neutrality will be ultimately within the states, the weakest parts, the poorest people in the, in the, within the states and on international level, uh, uh, small, small states and uh, LDCs in general. Therefore, this is important point while we're discussing what's going to happen with net neutrality or national, national, international level. That should be kept in mind and we, we should uh, make sure that we do not create new digital divides and new gaps uh, uh, where we are supposed to overcome existing uh, divides and existing gaps by using digital tools. Thank you, Miguel. Was it uh, what you expected from me? Even more. Okay, thank <laughs> you.
as usually you 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 deliver more than we can expect uh, thank you very much for those very clear points the the uh, you touch on, on some very timely issues that uh, normally have us talking all the time we do we do believe that uh, net neutrality although it is a national uh, decision um, or, or or a problem it has international sure. consequences so uh, even even more so when you are um, a country that is uh, well developed and uh, to provide services through your companies to other countries it has a, it has an impact always and then you have to talk again about uh, national sovereignty data sovereignty again going to the ixps and the traffic of of, of telecom and data and that has an impact on on um, the quality of policies of course uh, when we have a when we're trying to uh, to fulfill the the idea of not uh, of leaving no one behind then we need to talk about every single country in the world having the, uh, a, a, a floor of quality uh, of from policies that will give them solutions in their own uh, in their own problems and their own realities thank you for that Johan uh, it was a pleasure listening to you let me now move on to uh, our, a special guest from us uh, from uh, that we have today and um, as we are here to discuss the, our digital future, we now need to use uh, technologies. So we have, as you can see, we have a robot here. So um, uh, the, the, the special guest from today is joining us remotely. Uh, sadly, they couldn't be here, but uh, they are with us through the telepresence robot. Uh, she and other four experts we are, going, are going to share with us some ideas on how to navigate uh, ways to help developing countries. Uh, she's a cross-sectoral expert, not only well known for her expertise in revitalizing the computer languages and building the online spreadsheet system, but also for her engagement with government, private, and, and, and other parties, as we are in a multi-stakeholder sector. Uh, she serves on her country's National Development Council on, on Open Data Committee and the K-12 Curriculum Committee, and led the country first e-regulating project. She also works as a consultant for Apple and Oxford University Press. She actively contributes to GovZero, community and uh, which has been created uh, creating platforms or tools for civil society to engage itself in social or, or policy issues and uh, with that I would like to welcome Audrey Tang the digital minister of Taiwan Mr. Tang you have the floor Hello everyone um, I'm very happy um, as a digital, not a analog uh, minister, uh, and to share with you some thoughts uh, around um, building um, technological alliances. And um, in Taiwan, we have long been committed to assisting diplomatic allies in building up the basic infrastructure, including in areas such as information and communication technology, or ICT. Some of these allies are least developed countries, small island developing states, and landlocked developing countries. In our own society, the technological advancements of Taiwan's academia and industries have brought about a mature government. Applications such as online cash flow, such as online digital signatures, combined with e-government services, have provided the public with a wide variety of services. And the services allow them to file taxes online, to renew driver's licenses online, and to register for car registration certificates online, and make doctor's appointments online. Taiwan citizens and qualified non-citizens traveling in and out of the country also save much time when using automated immigration clearance services. We call them e-gates at ports and airports. Taiwan has seen a steady development of e-government information and communication technology, rapid adoption of new technologies and know-how, and pervasive use of the internet. As a result, Taiwan has expanded its development assistance to include e-government support. And this is in line with related recommendations by the United Nations Economic and Social Council and the International Telecommunication Union. Many developing countries have requested that Taiwan share its advanced e-government experience to help them provide more convenient services for their own people. 
And so in response, Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation and Development Fund have promoted ICT partnership projects. We have partnered uh, with Belize, with Burkina Faso, with El Salvador, with Paraguay, Palau, San Cristobal and the Nevis, San Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Swaziland and Tuvalu. And these projects include digitizing import and export data, including integrating traffic monitoring systems, including applying geographic information systems, managing medical information, installing wireless local area networks, as well as establishing electronic document systems. And so these efforts aim to enhance government efficiency, increase administrative transparency, strengthening connectivity with the civil society, and also improve government services. The 2016 United Nations e-government survey reported that Tuvalu and Palau in particular have made significant related improvements, highlighting Taiwan's success at assisting developing countries with their ICT development. And with that, let me introduce my good friend, Ye Zhen, also Chen, a consultant from Taiwan's third CC. For your uh, great elaboration about Taiwan's attitude and achievement in digital environments and how Taiwan has engaged with international friends. My name is Ye Zhen, also Chen, the consultant of TW3 CC. Uh, I want to echo Audrey's points with another lovely example and point about the other side of digital enabling. That's the importance of IC, which I noticed that we have uh, we uh, speak we talked about uh, talk a little bit about that. But I still want to read about this. So let me talk about example first. Our Ministry of Education has initiated a problem called a program called Digital Opportunity and built centers to practice this vision. Their vision is to enhance uh, digital capacities. The project focuses on human capacity building, serving a population of people from remote towns, islands, and indigenous peoples. They are middle aged, new, new citizens, handicapped women, and low income households. So the goal is to enable them to cultivate their digital ability to use online tools and applications. So especially they do the digital marketing, online self-learning and other digital services are aimed to seize so for the other sides to address the uh, side of ICT and bullying, that is their security issue. We all know digital technology is convenient, but it is also pose new challenges to us, including hacker attacks, blackmail, and fraud. Malicious internet threats are also truly affecting people's lives, social order, and even sometimes threaten national security. So Taiwan's corresponding policy include a four-year strategy for the development of ICT security. Our goals are establish a national cybersecurity mechanism. Second, cultivate ICT human capacity to assure homeland security and digital economy. So the last one is to develop key uh, technologies and promote self-reliant R&D. So all cities in Taiwan could have an opportunity to move forward to the smart cities and to cultivate the capacities to meet new challenges. So to engage with international community about ICT security, my organization, TWCRCC, plays a contact window to do information sharing. We distribute cyber incidents reports to our international friends and receive their new findings and feedbacks. We would definitely love to try to our best to engage with the international ICT security community. So uh, let me welcome the next speaker, Morris, from National of Transportation and Communications. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mao Xiong Lin, the Deputy Director General of Department of Post and the Telecommunications under the Ministry of Transportation and the Communications. One of the major functions of my department is to advance Taiwan's broken infrastructure and the state from planning. It's a great honor for me to have the opportunity to share our experience with you. 
Over recent decades, my government have actively promoted the development of information and the communication environment and the service, collaborating with other government departments, such as National Communication Commission. We hope to promote the readiness and the development of ICT's infrastructure, so as to make Taiwan an advanced digital society. Since 2002, we have implemented a series of shift national plans, promoting the development of Taiwan's open network and services. This e-Taiwan project and the latest one plus plan. Amongst these national key number one, I mean telecommunications market. Two, introducing a the main system and the spectrum ocean mechanism. Three, reducing the cost and the barriers of network deployment. Four, promoting the installation of the base stations. Number five, accelerating broadband network consumption. Number six, labor relations of other countries. This six strategies has been upgrading Taiwan's ICT-related industries. They also have laid a robust foundation for innovative application and the services that will improve the overall quality of life of people in Taiwan. Thank you for your time. I hope our experience is helpful to you. Now I want to pass my the floor to to Jack from NCC. Thank you. Thank you, Mao Xiong. I'm Jack Xiao Zhenji, Deputy Director from the National Communications Commission, NCC of Taiwan. According to the, the our goal in 2020 is to upgrade the broad speed of household to one gigabit. Why? The minimum broadband speed of underprivileged household with a bit per second. And the penetration rate of the digital life service will reach 60%. The digital infrastructure is not only to develop the broadband of the fundamental layer, but also to support the prosperity of uh, all kinds after. of innovative applications, content, and services. Immediately after. Then convert will drive the development of Taiwan's digital transformation and further reshape the value chain of industry and promote yeah, okay. Taiwan's digital economy. Our ultimate goal is to drive the digital transformation by broadband society and then embrace the paradigm shift and the rapid development of digital economy. Therefore, the NCEC has proposed the draft Digital Communication Act to set guidelines of the network environment, consumer protection, and the responsibility of service providers with the principle of internet governance. By adopting light touch approach, we also encourage self-regulation so as to promote greater innovation. Now I will transfer uh, and introduce my colleague, Kenny Huang from PWNIC. Okay, thank you, Jack. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kenny Huang, board member of Taiwan Network Information Center and MSC member of Asia Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum. It is my great pleasure to join the section and say a few words on behalf of Taiwan Network Information Center. As you may know, the first G20 Digital Minister meeting was launched in Germany from 6 to 7 April this year. The Digital Minister of the 19 uh, leading economic nation and the uh, European Union G20 joined together to discuss the opportunity and the challenge of the digitalization. Digital progress does not end at the national borders. Therefore, we need international solutions for global development. 
The first key goal of the G20 digital policy is to have a fast internet for all by 2025. The internet is a game ch ch uh, changer. The benefit of the in, uh, internet in developed country have inspired the developing country to develop the internet and use it to their benefit. The impact of the internet has caused the developing country to modify traditional methods of conducting information business by setting up new source of information and new methods of communication on global basis. The internet has helped developing country and to take advantage to access global source of information in, in order to improve their economy uh, market. Taiwan is also a small country, small island. The pro progressive in, uh, internet access in Taiwan help business align their process effectively with the customer expectation. It is enabled high rate of economic growth. Fortunately, we have the opportunity to share our experience and technology with other country through international cooperation project, such as St. Lucia Wi-Fi project, St. Vincent ICT center project, and so on. Through this international cooperation project, we realized how critical it could be as improving the connectivity, especially for small island countries. Inclusive internet connectivity is not, but it's the most important principle of digital policy for any, any countries. We, we should work together to develop a feasible solution. IGF is a great forum to discuss this issue. In closing, I'd like to express my gratitude to all participants and thank you for your invitation. I wish you have a fruitful and successful meeting in IGF. Thank you. Uh, we thank you very much. Certainly, our, our, your contribution has, has been very positive. Let me, let me open the floor and give the floor to the gentleman on the first row. OK, thank you, uh, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ji Hao Jun uh, from the Permanent Mission of China in Geneva. Um, I'm very concerned by what had been happened, uh, uh, what had happened that uh, um, a couple of uh, people from Taiwan um, speaking in the capacity as an official of certain national government, so-called national governments, uh, calling Taiwan a so-called small country. This is very inappropriate. IGF is a UN platform which only allows UN recognized people from UN-recognized uh, nations to, to participate. And uh, uh, as a UN uh, platform, uh, we show it, it is not a, a, a place for people to advocate uh, one China or one Taiwan or for Taiwan independence. And uh, I don't know if how these people get registered uh, as participants of this meeting because according to the UN res resolutions, such things are not allowed to happen. And uh, I hope that what I have been said is, uh, is, is put on record. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear colleague. No, uh, we can acknowledge your, your intervention, of course. Um, uh, let me just say that we are not talking politics here, we're just talking policies. There is no intention of uh, of taking into account any other situation. It's just contributions on what people are doing well and uh, uh, success stories, nothing more than that. Uh, with that, uh, but your, your point is very, is, is very well taken. But uh, yes, you can, you can, you can. Yes, the previous right. speakers from Taiwan, some of them claim that they are officials of a certain national government, and some of them claim that Taiwan is a small country. This is a very pro big problem. And the UN, plat UN meeting should never be platform for Taiwan independence. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you very much for that. Yes. Can you see me? Yes, of course. I will Thank open you. the floor for that. Uh, just, let, let, just let me say that um, uh, we, don't, uh, we are not doing that. Just, just to say that. Yes. Um, Mr. Chair, I can, can, I have the, can I have uh, the Solomon ambassador first, and then I'd go after him? Please, Thank Ambassador, you. go ahead, and then you have the floor. Um, th thank you very much, um, uh, uh, moderator, and, and, and the, uh, I must congratulate um, the permanent mission of uh, Barogai for um, um, hosting this very important um, um, uh, event. 
Um, and also, thank you very much for the presentation, all the presentation that uh, we've uh, had. I think the information that was uh, presented were very useful to my delegation, um, and it should be encouraged. And then also, thank you um, to all the um, Taiwanese um, um, expertise that uh, have provided their, their, their uh, information to us. I think it um, goes without saying, um, ICT has no gender um, boundaries, no nationality, and um, there should be no restriction um, as to um, how um, whoever has the expertise, whether country, organization that has expertise, to share them to us. And we are here as a you know, delegation from Solomon Islands who are still far behind the, the, the advancement of technology globally, would like to hear the experiences of other countries. And then we want you to share uh, those uh, uh, technology so that we um, are able to meet the uh, uh, SDGs uh, Sustainable Development Goal. Um, most of the technologies um, that are used in, 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 in LLDC, uh, LDCs and seeds comes from developed countries or large developing countries mostly, including USA, Japan, China, uh, India, and also Taiwan. Um, uh, has those uh, uh, um, expertise. And so for Solomon Islands, um, um, uh, the, the ICT industry will be, um, um, you know, would learn from each other. Uh, we don't see this uh, presentation by the, the Taiwanese expert as, as a political in nature. We basically, um, 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 appreciate the, the experience they're sharing to us. And I think um, they've been helpful to other smaller countries like in the Pacific, my countries as well. They share technology to us which are beneficial to us. That's why we are here to hear from everybody else. We don't see, like uh, you, you moderator clearly stated, it, we don't see it as, uh, as, as political in nature. Thank you very much. Mm, thank you very much, Excellency. Let me give the floor to the lady on the right, on the left. Thank you, Mr. Igara. Um, just very quickly, I won't be long. Um, first of all, congratulations for convening uh, this panel. It's uh, really healthy and uh, fantastic to see an increase in the number of SIDS workshops at this IGF, the 12th IGF. And uh, just, uh, I would just like to encourage you all to consider matchmaking before, this, uh, before we'd have the closing ceremony for next year's IGF, and not to wait for the call from the MAG in terms of workshop proposals, but to start thinking about pertinent issues. And I put this uh, invitation across to the Solomon's uh, permanent mission as well. Uh, and, and also to everybody else in the room to consider uh, putting together workshop proposals from the LLDCs and the LDCs and the SID states. That being said, we are on foot to begin a dynamic coalition um, and Tracy Hackshaw and a few others are thinking about this. So if you're interested, I would suggest that you all get together. That's one. And quite aside from that, we're beginning a SIDS and LLDCs and LDCs alliance to see how we can grow the global conversation how, and how we can share this information because we're limited. The IGF space is limited, but how we can move this to a global repository. And we'll be working closely with Jane and reaching out to Diplo and other stakeholders to see how we can uh, collaborate. That being said, I wish you all a fantastic Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, w I would like to. It's uh, it's on the same matter. Okay, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In reply to uh, to what had been said by our colleague from Solomon Islands, I would like to emphasize that UN is first of all a political organization. Um, it is true that uh, in the internet knows no borders, but we people have nationalities. And uh, as for sharing of expertise and the experience and even uh, uh, technical or financial assistance to 
less, least developed countries or small islands, the People's Republic of China stands ready to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are certain that you are a strong and very innovative player. Thank you for that. Um, can you have the floor? Thank you very much, Miguel. Uh, thank you to all panelists. Uh, you all provided some very uh, interesting inputs and uh, uh, information about your expertise and experiences and, and some of the things that still uh, remain to be done. Um, I have uh, two questions. Uh, one is for uh, our chair, actually, uh, as a country in this situation. Um, with the, with the, 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 the Connect 2020, um, how has that impacted uh, Paraguay specifically, and will you uh, will your country meet that target? And to our colleague from the ITU, uh, 2020 is just around the corner. Um, are we going to meet that target? ITU has been working on this for a long time. Um, you know, I heard some projects today that, though they seem very interesting, the Ebola thing they don't work if you don't actually have the connectivity to start doing that. Um, so it's, I find it fascinating that you have time and energy to spend on that project, which is very important and interesting, but the, the, the preliminary step at the base is not there, so ultimately is that tool going to be useful? So I would like to hear your point of view on, or your, your, the results of, uh, of how close you are to reaching that goal too, uh, and if we'll meet the 2020 target. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian. I can see, yeah. Go ahead, you have the floor. Um, <clears throat> Hi, uh, my name is Anju, and I'm from Fiji, but I also represent an intergovernmental organization called SPC. And uh, my question is to Maritza. Um, you mentioned there's going to be um, 55 e-community centers in the Pacific. Um, what are you doing in terms of, in, uh, in like, wh what strategies are you using in terms of dealing with, say, for example, these community centers are in the rural and remote areas. How do you deal with it when it, there is a tsunami or a climate change issue? Thank you. Thank you very much. Ambassador, you have the floor. Um, thank you, uh, moderator. Um, I just come back to um, ask a, a question to um, uh, Ms. Uh, Delgado. Um, just before I, I, I came uh, to this meeting, I, I made a call by um, in the islands, uh, in the very remote islands to my, to my brother. And uh, I asked him whether they are, connect they are now connected to 3G network because it's much cheaper, you know, calling from Geneva to the islands, it would be much cheaper to use some of these uh, apps that are much cheaper. So I was asking him about that, um, uh, whether they been connected to 3G, and he said, yes, we are connected, but um, it's not working uh, very much. It, 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 it doesn't work uh, properly. Now, my, my question is that um, since we monopolize uh, the telecommunication in Solomon Islands, the coverage of um, um, a network to the uh, to the islands were around 70 to 80 percent, so it's pretty pretty good coverage. The problem I see though is the quality of connectivity, and I don't know, um, you know, ITU, what you know, experience from other, you know, islands like probably the Caribbeans. The, you know, because I, I think the issue now is, is really to do with the, the quality of connectivity. Because if they are to, 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 to um, engage in, uh, you know, in businesses, enterprise, they need that quality uh, connectivity. And, and, and um, so just, just to, to plug it up for, for your comments, thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Yes, you go ahead. Please identify yourself. Uh, thank you very much, uh, panel. My name is Ajendra Pratap. I'm from the Permanent Mission of Fiji. Um, I just want to make a comment, and a comment is also a question, um, sort of. <laughs> um, the road to full connectivity for LDDCs and LDCs and SIDs. I understand that this. Uh, will be achieved over the coming years. 
but the imped impediments of costs, remoteness, and digital literacy will remain as it's endemic to uh, SIDS and LDCs. This will also open uh, those states uh, when uh, full connectivity is achieved to cyber attacks and the need for governments uh, to take measures uh, within its capabilities. What, if any, assistance will be given to counter this to the small island states and LDCs? Thank you very much, dear colleague. I see no more takers for the floor. Then I will, uh, I will give the floor to my dear colleagues here in the, at the table. Uh, would you like to take a few shots on this? Sure. Ahead, I'll just say very briefly, um, thank you to everyone who are asking their questions. Um, we are more in the habit of working with local people to train local people. Rather than more of a top-down um, solution, we're looking at building both community networks, which are citizen-built, managed-run networks, and internet exchange points, and training local people. So if you do have issues, we have colleagues who, from PIC ISOC who are here, which is our chapter in the Pacific Islands, but also we're working closely with organizations like the Caribbean Telecommunication Union and others. It's important to work with some of the regional groups that the ITU has um, to come into those meetings and express your concerns. And also, I think, as uh, Miguel has indicated earlier, the Plenipotentiary Conference is coming up in November, October. It's an important place to make sure that some of your views are heard. Um, many views were heard at the development conference, uh, the ITU's development conference in um, October. So most of the resolutions that come out of that meeting have the references to LLDCs and SIDS and LDCs. So there's very broad support for you there. Obviously, Maritza can talk to you specifically about what they offer. But we have grant programs for innovative projects in any country, um, specifically those that have we ha where we have chapters, but also other places. There are lots of different ways, and I think um, Salah may have left. But the idea that came out of the Small Island Developing States Workshop earlier this week was to try and come up with a resource sharing idea or tool. And I think that's a really important one. And it starts out small, yeah? where people can get together, talk about grant programs, talk about good ideas and other projects that have worked, but also projects that have failed. You learn a lot in what, I don't call it failure personally, because I, I help do infrastructure projects. I call it semi-progress, and then you kind of reboot and make more progress. You learn from everything you do. So there's a lot of help also from the internet technical community. We also have something called the Internet Engineering Task Force, which is our sub subsidiary uh, standards body. We don't control it, it controls itself. Um, they're very independent, but they have wonderful engineers there and it, we've had meetings in all over the world, in Asia, Latin America, North America, and hoping to go to Africa soon. Please contact us, we have grant programs for both government officials, technical experts, and others. Very neutral for any country. So, um, and yes, any country. So just let us know, contact us at any point in time, and we have lots of experts we can put you in touch with as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jane, and, and thank you for the work that ISOC is doing on the matter. Uh, Maritza, would you like to answer some of the direct questions that we've given to you? And afterwards, I just will do a, a very quick close-up, not to bother you anymore with this. <laughs> you have already been very patient, and we thank you very much. Maritza, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, just a very quick um, answer to the, to the questions. The first one, how to meet the 2020 agenda. So uh, our ITU is uh, working towards meeting this uh, goal, and we are working directly with the, with the government. Government, as, as uh, you mentioned already, W2DC was held, and all um, uh, member states were um, committed to work on investing on ICTs uh, development uh, uh, within the countries. As we also said, uh, we were discussing this issue yesterday, and uh, they said we can provide the, uh, the, the standards and the, the everything from outside at, at an international way, but it's the national commitment that is uh, needed on this. 
but uh, most of the most of the member states, all of the member states, have adopted this to commit and to invest more in, in ICT development. Um, and, uh, and how is the CDR, the, 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 the cold uh, data recording? So uh, this is a special project that was developed for three for these uh, three uh, specific countries, which is Liberia, Guinea, and uh, Sierra Leone, because they were hit a lot by the Ebola. So it was the, a ministerial roundtable that took place, and everybody uh, was uh, they agreed in, in developing something for them to use and to tackle this uh, spread of uh, to have. The, the, the use of ICTs to uh, tackle this spread of, of, of the epidemics because they suffered a lot from this. So now we are investing, everything is ready. We have bought equipment. This, uh, this um, uh, project is being developed together with the, the government of Japan and we are working towards that. We have bought all the equipment and it's ready. It's, uh, it has been settled up and now we are working towards implementing new tools and new ICTs. And also, it's something uh, uh, very interesting is that we need and government needs to share infrastructure. When, once we share infrastructure, then uh, uh, all constraints can be achieved. Oh, or can, it can be, okay. Another, the other question is how to deal with the e-centers on the Pacific Island. So we have worked together with the government, the, the 11 countries, uh, we have signed an agreement, uh, ITU was, uh, was there. And uh, the good thing uh, uh, about this project and is that uh, before we had our head of division was from Samoa. Ms. Watai Purcell knew very well this, this, uh, all these islands. So she knew what she was talking about. And she discussed with the, all the 11 countries where to put these. And these, uh, we deployed equipment to, for satellite connectivity. And these are deployable stations. So once something will happen, they can fold up and they can move these, these, these uh, visas away so it can, they cannot be damaged by, for example, a tsunami. So this, uh, we, we, we have deal with this. Qu uh, quality of connectivity. How, how to deal. So we play, ITU plays the standards internationally and it's the national government that needs to be committed to, uh, to uh, verify the quality of connectivity. Sometimes we can be covered by only one network and only, we have only two base stations that can be connected. But it's, if, we have, if we need more coverage, we need more uh, bandwidth, broadband, is, is, is that, and, and for example, this report, as, as, as I was mentioning, gives us some, some, some information about, about the uh, access to submarine cables. And it says that 26 out of 30, the sea landing LDCs have landing stations. So to improve quali quality of, of, of connectivity, they should be connected to the, to the submarine cables to improve connectivity and to, and to improve uh, internet access. So these very uh, fast uh, answers uh, to um, just to answer all the questions that we have received. And we are open. And also I just want to share if, if somebody wants the draft of this report, I have some drafts here if you want just to have a look at the draft. The report will be launched by January, mid-January 2018. Thank you. Thank you again to Melita, to Jane, and of course to the yeoman who had to leave because he's a very busy man. <laughs> there is no other excuse for it. <laughs> it, it. We were very happy to have him. He's a very packed agenda these days. And, uh, but we have Barbara from Diplo here, so it, you are still present. Uh, well, just to finish up, just to wrap up, uh, first let me thank everybody for being here. Uh, the, uh, the issues that LLDC sits and LLDCs need to, to deal with are very deep and very, and very complex, and they, are, and, they, and they are very much individual to the, uh, the identity of each country and, and, uh, and, and state. So we keep working uh, on this all together. We very much uh, welcome all the initiatives on working together on forming groups of negotiating, uh, of negotiating, negotiating power or in like-minded groups for this. And uh, this will lead us to the realization of the 2030 agenda for our countries. 
So uh, through the through, through the sustainable development of good ICTs and the 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 sharing of good experience, we can do more and will do more. Thank you very much again for being with us. I just our last touch for us that sadly we are I, th I don't think we're we are getting to the to the target for the connect 2020 but we are coming uh, closer than respect that was expected for us and i do believe that itu is working on a on on, on the next set of uh, plan for for i think 2024 maybe 2025 it's being decided so uh, we we hope to do uh, better as we did uh, as we we gain some quality in the road to, to, to the target of the Connect 2020, but uh, we do see things with a positive view. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much for having me. The open forum is closed. Yeah. <laughs>